Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game from round 7 of the Altibox Norway Championship. It's Ding Liren versus Shahriar Mamedyarov. Uh, I will not mention if it's a classical game or, or the Armageddon, but uh, it's really such a wonderful game that uh, it will be a pleasure to guess whether it's from the classical or the Armageddon. Now, we, before we get this show on the road, I would just like to mention, uh, some of you have been asking me uh, how come you're not getting notifications from my channel even though you are subscribed to the channel. Now, uh, I always said I have no idea, but uh, obviously it's an issue with YouTube and YouTube uh, members, uh, mem well, members of YouTube made a video on it. It's a very short video, some, I believe, four or five minutes. I will put a link to it in the description below. Uh, it will be uh, the first thing you see in the description. So if you're interested about this issue, do check it out. They explain it very nicely and, uh, well, it would be just much better than if I explained it in this video. So if it's happening to you and, you know, if you're also experiencing this, do check it out. Now, that being said, uh, let's return to the game. And it's also a very special game for one more reason, but I will also mention that uh, somewhat later. Really just a wonderful mixture of preparation and uh, attacking creativity. Uh, so without further ado, let's check it out. Uh, Ding opens with d4. Uh, we have knight to f6, c4, uh, we have g6, and sorry about that. Uh, and we have f3, the, the anti-Grunfeld. Uh, we have d5 by Mamedyarov, c captures, knight captures, and now e4, pushing the knight back. There is no knight on c3, so black can further uh, go for some exchanges. Knight back to b6, and now only knight to c3. We have bishop to g7 by Mamedyarov, now bishop to e3, defending the d4 pawn, and Mamedyarov castles. Uh, we have queen to d2 probably waiting, uh, preparing to exchange bishops at some point, and now comes e5. And here uh, Ding just grabs more space in the center. We have d5 uh, and now c6 uh, attacking Ding's strong center. Uh, and h4. So this is nothing new. There are uh, almost 100 games in the database with this exact same setup. h4 uh, is the main idea in this position. Uh, Black has a Fianchetto, Fianchetto dark square bishop. You want to bust open the, the h file here and then at some point uh, trade the dark, dark square bishops and checkmate the black king. That's how that's how it works. Uh, so c captures on d5, the main re reply, e captures on d5, and now knight 8 to d7, preparing to get this knight over to, over to f6. With h5 by Ding, knight to f6 as planned, we have captures here, and now you, although it is principled to capture towards, towards the center here, it would be a too, too dangerous of a move. Uh, because after bishop to h6, black will be in a lot of trouble. For example, you, you could capture here, but then after captures, captures, you allow queen h6 check, and then you have to go uh, for a nice walk with your king, uh, which is not, not something you, you want to do. Uh, so, after this h captures on g6, we have f captures on g6, and now Ding just castles queen side. Uh, we have bishop to d7, still the, the main idea, as it has been played many times. King to b1, you don't want your king on the c file as the black rook is, uh, well, coming to occupy that same file. And now comes d6, a very nice uh, pawn already on the 6th rank. Uh, it's nicely protected there and, uh, well, you also open up this very important diagonal for your light square bishop. You're somehow planning to get it all the way there uh, where it will be, uh, the, you know, very useful. Uh, and here, there are two games in the database where bishop f5 check was played, but white was able to win both of them, so uh, people pretty much gave up on that idea. Here, the new idea is e4, and this is uh, exactly what Mamidiaro played. So, well, it's not really that strange. They are both top elite players, so they know their theory. Uh, we have f captures on e4, and now knight to g4, going after the dark square bishop here. Of course, uh, Ding doesn't want to part with his uh, uh, very strong attacking piece, so bishop g5 attacks the queen, queen to e8, and now knight to f3, uh, developing the knight, also blocking the f file because knight to f2 was a threat, you would, well, lose one of your rooks. Uh, so, uh, here, uh, the main idea again, and we are still in theory waters, and it's already move 19. Uh, rook to f7 is the main idea. Rook captures on c3 also is a possibility. There are two games, uh, one uh, was won by white, white one by black, um, the more notable one, Max, uh, Maxim Rochstein, uh, Ro Rochstein versus David Navarra from 2012 European Club Cup, uh, where after b captures, queen captures on e4, check was played, but after bishop to d3, uh, white was able to win that game. Uh, black, it, it obviously didn't come as uh, too big of a surprise. So if David Navarra lost this with black, I, I don't know uh, what to make of it, but I'm sure I'm sure you can play it. Uh, but Ding goes for the main idea. We have rook to f7 and now queen to e1. 
with ideas of some point maybe uh, jumping to h4 where from where you can deliver a lot of damage uh, you know along the h file uh, with rook to c5 and now uh, what do you play here? Here, queen to h4 is a bit too early because black can either just grab here and then the rook will be guarding the h7 pawn, or you can just play h6 and uh, kick away the bishop and continue playing the game. If uh, if white tries something s uh, sneaky like bishop d3, you can just capture it. It's not a problem. After knight captures, you can go rook f2, and white doesn't have a, have any good compensation for the piece. A queen h7 doesn't really do anything. The king will be uh, very safe there as the rook prevents any checks along the f file. So after rook to c5, there are two games in the database. Interestingly, uh, out of those two games in the in the database, bishop to e7 is the main move, and the white was able to win both of those games. But here, uh, the engine actually slightly prefers the bishop to d2 to the bishop to e7 that was already played, and this is what the ding goes for. And it seems. Uh, well, it seems that Ding came fully prepared, as this is now a new move, and uh, it is the first time where uh, we have uh, 21 move played, that uh, it is only now that we have a completely new game on our hands. So, a lot of theory went into this game, uh, obviously both uh, both Ding and Mamedyarov knew this, and what do you do here? So, the kings are on opposite sides of the board, both castles, and uh, as usual when you have a position like this, uh, white will of course try to attack on the king side, black will uh, try to attack on the queen side. So here, bishop to e6. Mamidarov wants to somehow get rid of this knight here and then get his queen over to a4 to start an attack against uh, against the Ding's king. Uh, so what do you do here? Uh, here, I think Ding's preparation still leads into, into this uh, position because here, rook to c1, the top re engine recommendation, but the Ding plays e5. It is the, the engine's second recommendation. And here, I think Ding is trying to catch Mamedyarov off guard as uh, most likely, uh, like any top player, Mamedyarov knows by heart uh, the reply to every engine's top recommendation, but maybe not to the engine's second recommendation. So here, Ding is uh, basically testing what Mamedyarov will do now. And, uh, well, there are uh, a couple of possibilities. You could go knight to a4, let's say, to eliminate this knight here, and then go uh, go further forward with your plan. Uh, but Mamedyarov says, nope, this pawn is free for grabs, and he decides to capture it with bishop captures on e5. So what do you do here? Uh, it's not all that great to capture the bishop here. If you capture it, then rook captures comes with an attack on the queen. After you block, knight f2 will again uh, win material here. So uh, Ding plays bishop to d3. He was very much prepared to give up the e5 pawn. Uh, and here, Mamedyarov has to go for knight to c4. Uh, just, you know, put that knight there on a very nice square. And after bishop captures, bishop captures, uh, uh, not captures on c4, but rook captures on c4, you will capture on e5. And after knight captures, black will have this, uh, well, uh, a very nice position uh, where the material on the board is equal, but, uh, you know, black black will black will definitely fight. But here, uh, knight to a4 was played by Mamedyarov, and this is a mistake. So it's very interesting. Both of them played the perfect game, pretty much, if you ask the engine. Uh, up until move 21, and this is only move 23, and already Mamedyarov uh, makes a mistake, which I think it's, it is fascinating, uh, because, uh, I don't know, it, maybe he doesn't know theory of this line at all, maybe he played it all, you know, uh, calculated all of the moves, but I don't think that's the case. Uh, but, which is always very interesting. 20, 21 moves uh, played, you know, w with perfect theory, and then two moves after that, you know, you, you just make uh, a mistake, which Ding uh, takes advantage of very nicely. Uh, Ding plays knight captures on e5 with rook captures on e5, attacking the queen, and only now queen to h4. So what uh, what do you do here? Uh, obviously, you have to block, uh, <laughs> block the, the h file, uh, and after you can capture on c3. But here, uh, Mamedyarov immediately plays rook to h5, uh, pushes the queen back, and we have queen to g3. Uh, so what do you do now? Uh, now the problem is there's always this tension. You have to keep in mind that if uh, white captures on h5, uh, you will be forced to capture with the g pawn. So here, one of your options is just to capture on, a, uh, on h1, but then again, you give white the semi-open h file, and then you can go knight to c5. Uh, just putting pressure on white, uh, controlling d7, not allowing this pawn to be pushed any further, and uh, it uh, would be the best course of action for Mamedyarov. But here, Mamedyarov captured instantly. Now, this is, uh, if you don't gain anything by capturing, I was always told you shouldn't capture, uh, because this seems to only improve the position of white's bishop, which is now just a monster. 
uh, as black parted with his uh, dark square bishop. So here, white having the bishop pair, the semi-open h-file, uh, it's a very dangerous game. Uh, here, queen to a4 by Mamedyarov going after the a2 pawn, and here, uh, the move that's really, really, really amazing. Uh, Ding just ignores this threat and plays d7. He says, I don't care if you capture an a2, I already have a pawn on d7. And here's the here's the problem. If you capture with the queen, king c1, there's no good continuation here. Queen a1 check, you can go bishop to b1, just block. And now you have a lot of problems. Your pawn uh, is ready to, to reach the d8 square, the queen x square. Uh, rook f8 doesn't stop it because uh, the rook from d1 also controls that square. So you will have to capture it, but then you get the problem of this tension that you were having on the h file. Rook captures, g captures, and queen b8 check. Rook to f8 as the bishop controls this diagonal, and now after queen captures on b7, black's position just falls apart. Uh, it's, uh, the queen is really misplaced on a1. If you move it, bishop captures on h7 is very strong, followed by queen captures here. And with the bishop pair slicing uh, all the way here, it's uh, really impossible to play already. <laughs> the threat is even just to capture the bishop. There's, there's no escape here for black. And it's not better to capture with the bishop. If bishop captures king c1, you don't have anything here. Queen captures on d7, and Ding again calculates everything perfectly. Rook captures on h5, g captures, and now bishop captures on h7, uh, just wins the queen. The, you will get some material for it, but it's not enough. Captures, captures. Uh, bishop, queen will be, <coughs> uh, of course, superior to, to rook, knight, and bishop. So, after d7, Mamedyarov goes rook back to d5, just blocks the pawn here. Now, uh, while the bishop is here, the rook no longer controls the d-file, but here Ding has everything prepared. Bishop c2, first attacking the queen, now forcing the queen to capture. We have queen capture some d7, and now comes, uh, again, just a wonderful attacking move, but... Uh, feel free to pause the video and continue this attack for white. It's not a, a crushing move uh, immediately, but it leads to a very, uh, very powerful position for white. So uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds while I have a nice sip of my water. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. You have been paying attention because we've discussed from the moment that this video started that this bishop has to uh, go to this diagonal. And this is exactly what Ding plays. Now look at how many uh, juicy black pieces are on this diagonal. This is just awesome for this light square bishop. So what do you do here? Obviously, you will capture once. This is what Mamedyarov played. We have rook captures, rook captures. Now your bishop on e6 is under attack. Uh, and it's undefended if you move the queen, but also your queen is under attack, so you have to, you know, deal with both threats while still keeping an eye on, uh, on each other. Uh, and here, again, comes the move you had to find. It's not just enough to find bishop to b3, so again, very, you know, briefly pause the video and continue the attack for white. Just a nice idea. Uh, for those of you, again, who were able to do it, congratulations, you are playing the perfect attacking game. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, queen to h4. Yes, that is a very nice move. Uh, the queen controls the d8 square. So here you're already threatening rook to d8 to win the queen. So again, Mamedyarov, uh, as uh, Ding was playing this move, Mamedyarov was strolling around the playing hole. And as soon as Mamedyarov came back, he, he immediately played knight to f6. And here you might think, but what's knight to f6? Does that really stop so something? Uh, and, you know, I, I, I already thought, yeah, you, you just capture here and then you win the queen. That's that's how chess works, right? Well, not really. Mamedyarov had a, a really excellent reply to this. If bishop captures and bishop captures on b3, yes, you do win the queen. But, you know, it's not enough to win the queen if you're getting checkmated. Rook f1 check. King has nowhere to go. And here, as, of course, the bishop is blocking the c2 square, uh, it would be very sad for Ding to finish the game like this. Uh, but here, Ding continued the game again in the best way. So once again, you're playing this, continue the perfect game. Uh, sorry, the perfect attacking game. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, just congratulations. This is, you know, move by move, uh, just, just a brilliancy. Rook to d6. Just attack the bishop twice. Uh, what's black really going to do? You can't defend it. You have to keep an eye on the knight on f6 also. So it's a very natural move, but, you know, when you play against a guy like Mamedyarov, uh, you always have to double check or triple check, you know, everything. So Mamedyarov captured on b3, but here Ding just played rook captures on f6, and it was in this position on move 34. Uh, that Shahri Mamidar resigned the game and uh, a brilliant victory for, for Ding Liren. 
Uh, and now I will mention it. This was not an Armageddon game. This was a game in classical time format. So two full points for Ding Liren for this wonderful achievement. And once again, okay, let's just uh, <laughs> say why the game ended here. You have to play something. Let's say you capture here. Queen captures, there's the threat of checkmate and also the threat of losing the bishop. So it doesn't really matter what you reply. You can deliver check here, maybe to prevent checkmate. Captures, uh, the, the queen captures, g captures, and a captures on b3. You're up a piece, of course, in a completely winning endgame. And if you don't, if you, I don't know, after queen captures on f6, you could play queen f8 to block. Uh, but again, you can either just trade, pick up the bishop here, and it's just everything, everything wins. So, of course, uh, Mamidaro knows this. After rook captures on f6, he resigned. And I think it's really fascinating how, uh, up until this point, this was the moment where Ding improved. Uh, here, we mentioned that there are two games in the database where bishop e7 was played. Ding improved with bishop to d2. And then after bishop to e6, he didn't play the top uh, engine recommendation, but e5. And it was enough to, to confuse Mamedyarov. He did not uh, know the, the exact reply to the second engine's recommendation. Uh, by heart and uh, very quickly he blundered. He, he decided to go for the pawn and okay bishop d3 and now knight a4 a mistake which Ding uh, took advantage of perfectly and then we have uh, this entire beautiful game. So yeah. Uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Ramachandran uh, Venkata Subramanian, Christoph Jenny, One Open Door Books, Prakhar Maini, uh, and Daniel Norwood for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon, most likely with another game from round 7 of the Altibox Norway Championship. Uh, but I'll probably do that one tomorrow morning. So, you know, enjoy this one up until then. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon. Have an excellent rest of your day.